This is week 11, part six. So let's do some examples. Imagine you've got a friend who has a CB radio transmitter. These are the kind that uh, truckers use a lot to communicate with each other. When they're out on the highway, it's got a fairly short distance that it can operate over. And assume that they have a transmitter that can produce 100 milliwatts of radiated power. So that's the actual power in the wave that it's transmitting in the electromagnetic, the radio wave that it's transmitting, transmits at a frequency of 27 megahertz. And you're receiving it from one kilometer away. And the question is, what are the wavelength, the intensity, the electric field, the amplitude of the uh, electric field amplitude and the B field amplitude? Can we figure out all these things? Okay, take a look at this first wavelength. That you should all be able to get without too much difficulty. So we're given the frequency. We know this is an electromagnetic wave, so we know the speed. So you've got frequency and you've got speed, and you're asked for wavelength. You can do that very simply. Just use the formula that the speed of the wave is the frequency times wavelength. Usually we would have written V equals F times lambda, but here it's the speed of light. So C, the speed of light, is F times lambda. Rearranging lambda is C over F, put in the numbers, and out comes 11 meters. So that's pretty straightforward. But now what about intensity? You have to remember, what did we mean by intensity? Intensity is power per unit area. And the question is, what area do you use? It's clear enough what the power is, that's 100 milliwatts. But what area is that spread over? You're at one kilometer away, how is that wave spread out? What, what area is it spread over? You can draw yourself a picture of this, and it might look a little bit like mine here, and you'd see that you've got some kind of a transmitter, and you're standing one kilometer away, so that wave has spread out, and it's spread over a great big sphere. It's a sphere of that radius, of that one kilometer radius. So that 100 milliwatts, instead of being concentrated right at the transmitter, is now spread out over the whole surface of that. So you have to figure out the area of the surface of a sphere, one kilometer, in, um, in radius. And the area of the sphere is 4 pi r squared. So that's four pi times this one kilometer, one times 10 to the third meters squared. So you get roughly 12 million square meters. Now you can very easily calculate the intensity by just putting the numbers in the formula and out comes the answer. And it's, uh, 7.96 10 to the minus 9 watts or 7.96 nanowatts. Okay, now we have the intensity, the intensity of this radio wave at this point. Can we calculate the electric field and the magnetic field amplitudes? Those are given by this other relation that relates intensity and the electric and magnetic field amplitudes. And then I gave you two other versions of it. I've only draw, uh, written one here. You can write it just in terms of the electric field amplitude so that that relates the electric field amplitude and the intensity. Turning that around, uh, the electric field amplitude is the square root of two times C times the uh, times mu naught times the intensity. And so if you put in all of those numbers, out comes an electric field of 2.45, 10 to the minus three volts per meter, or you can put the units as newtons per coulomb, either one. Then to get the B field, you could go back to this, or you could even easier just use the simple relation that um, the electric field is C times the magnetic field. And now we're trying to get the magnetic field, so we take E and divide by C in this case. So you take that 2.45, divide by three times 10 to the eight, and you get a very, very tiny magnetic field, eight times 10 to the minus 12 Tesla.
Okay, that's an example of radio waves. Now let's look at the particle behavior uh, a little bit more. So what happens if you've got a green laser pointer, five milliwatts power? And the question is, how many photons does it produce per second? So all we know is that it's green and it puts out five milliwatts of power. We know the wavelength, that's the green part. And it's five milliwatts of output power. So how do we get how many photons that represents? Well, you could calculate something. Now that you know the color, you could figure out what is the energy of the individual photons? That doesn't tell you how many there are, but that tells you how much energy each one represents. Let's do that calculation first. Each photon would have this much energy. Remember, it's H times the frequency or HC over lambda. So you take this Planck's constant, this really tiny number, times C and then divide by the wavelength, and you'll come out with the energy. That's the energy of each photon. If you want, you could convert it as 2.3 electron volts, but let's not, let's keep it as joules. Because the five milliwatts is the same thing as five times 10 to the minus three joules per second. Five times 10 to the minus three joules per second, when each photon is a very, very much smaller amount than that. So how many of these does it take to make up that amount in a second? That's the question. How many photons are there in a second? If in each second we're producing five times 10 to the minus three joules, but we're doing it in pieces that are themselves three times 10 to the minus 19 joules, how do we get the N? You just divide these two numbers. You just take the ratio. The number of photons is the total power divided by the energy of each photon. Total power is joules per second. Energy of each photon is joules. Or if you like, you could call that joules per photon. And then you'd end up with photons per second. And we get a huge number, 1.34 times 10 to the 16th photons per second. So these photons are very, very fine, very, very tiny. That's why we don't normally observe them.